Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we have got another Discoveries and Declutters video. I just want to put a really quick disclaimer at the start. I have, ironically, during my no spend month, which I introduced, I believe, by saying part of the reason I wanted to do it was because I had so much stuff that I really wanted to just stop the flow of stuff coming in because I lose things all the time. And at the moment, I have somehow misplaced my camera that I film on. So we're on my old camera at the moment. So I'm sorry if it's maybe a bit clicky or whatever, which was kind of the reason I had replaced it but I didn't want to not put up a video so we're filming in the old camera. This is all the makeup that I wore through the month of August so discoveries and declutters for anyone who's not seen one before. I go through it all, talk about what I liked, so my discoveries, what I'm going to keep and then I hopefully declutter a few things and I do think I have quite a few declutters in this one so let's get started. We'll start with eye products. The first thing that I've got here is a L'Oreal mascara. This is the baby roll one. I don't even know if they make these anymore. It is in the shade Lilac. I am going to keep this purely because I think it's quite unique within my collection. I don't have a lot of coloured mascaras and I certainly only have one purple mascara so I am going to keep a hold of it for when I want to do those kinds of looks. Something I am definitely decluttering. This is from Urban Decay, it's one of their heavy metal liners. As you can see there, like I definitely got a lot of use out of this product. I really really liked it, but it is actually, as I found out when I went to use it, completely dried up. So that's kind of as much as you're getting out of it now and it's, yeah, just not suitable for use anymore. So that one is definitely going in the bin. Another thing that I am keeping, Stila Glimmer and Glow Shadows. This is in the shade Twig. And that is what this one looks like. Now my only concern with these is that I think they will dry up quite quickly so I'm going to keep a hold of this but I'm not going to put it into holding. I'm going to put it back into my storage and if I want to keep using it before the end of the year keep using it because I don't want it to get completely dried up and just have to throw it away. I'm going to move that one back into my stash. Another thing that I'm keeping. So this is one of my ABH. Obviously it's a quad palette, it's only got two shadows in it though. These are both absolutely beautiful. I really really like both of them. So that is Brick there which is just such a good easy to use shade. And Rosette is, that was actually the first ever ABH shadow that I ever bought. That is Rosette and Brick. And I'm definitely keeping both of them. But another thing that I'm keeping is this Smashbox Cherry Smoke palette. I believe it was limited edition so I don't think you can get it anymore but it is absolutely beautiful. I have really gone on about this palette ever since I first got it. I really like it. I reach into it quite a lot. It's one of the few palettes that I have that I actually looked to use before I started my no buy. Obviously there's no pan or anything in it but you could just tell I used to keep my things really pristine whereas this one always you could see how much I liked it. So I won't go on too much about it because you can't get it anymore but I'm keeping that. Let's just talk about something I'm decluttering. So this is the MAC Warm Neutrals palette and I am decluttering it other than this one shade which I've moved into my own little MAC palette which I actually have eyeshadows to put in but I haven't filmed that whole video yet so it's only got two in at the moment and it's Woodwinked in Amber Lights that I'm keeping. This is Woodwinked which I bought as an individual shadow so I really really like that and then Amber Lights is this one here so they're not that individual or anything I'm well aware of it and Amber Lights is the one that I took out of this palette but I am decluttering this because other than that shade none of these are that special I kind of own them all in other ways there were a few more that I was like ah oh, do I just take that one out but ultimately when it came down to it the other shades that I wanted to keep were the likes of this one and this one which I know that I own elsewhere so this whole side of this palette is just there is no need for anyone who's not a makeup artist to own this palette and I suppose that's a key thing with a lot of palettes, particularly like the contour palettes and things that were so popular for a while is that if you are one person with one face you don't need like this many base shades. So it is probably a good palette if you are the likes of a makeup artist but I am not so I'm decluttering this. I'm feeling good about it but I'm holding on to these two obviously. Another palette I'm holding on to sorry to blind you, is the Narcissist Dual Intensity Palette. Again, I won't go on about this for too long because I don't think you can still get it, but I do really, really like these shadows, so I am holding on to this one. This is like one of those ones that I definitely would be holding on to anyway. It's from the Urban Decay Oz Great and Powerful collection, so as you can see, it's actually still in the cardboard box as much as it is nicked at the edges and there's certain makeup products that I just part of a sort of collection thing and it's more about that than it is even about the product. This was the Oz the Great and Powerful and I did get both of the palettes, the Glinda palette and the 
Theodora palette. So this is the Theodora palette and this shade West, this is just one of my, oh, it even feels beautiful. It's one of those ones that just is so stunning. So I really, really like that shade. And I like all the shades, I've used all these shades, so definitely holding on to this one. And as you can see from that swatch, it's also still performing, so we're happy with that. Oh my god, no, what's happened to you? See, this is the problem, you put these things into storage, this has been... Something has rubbed all over this that I'll need to clean later. But this is the Too Faced Gingerbread Cookie, it's from the Grand Hotel set that was out for Christmas 2016, I want to say. That set had three individual palettes in it so this is the gingerbread cookie one totally forgot the name of it which is obviously just the neutral one and i really like it i probably will never finish up this bronzer but i do really i mean not that i think i'll finish up these shadows either realistically but i do really like them they're very easy to wear so i will definitely be holding on to this i have got my vice palette here and i went through a big phase of really enjoying our decay vice palettes um, and this one I still enjoy. I really like this shade, this shade, this shade. This is one of those palettes that if I was ever to kind of hit pan on a couple of shades or at some point in the future I might depot a couple of shades. But the thing with discoveries and declutters is that once I've used something once, I'm putting it in and having to make that decision. Whereas I'm hoping next year to maybe do more things like a palette a week and really explore the palette so that I maybe will um, be able to depot you know, a couple of shades and get rid of the general palette overall. But at the moment, I'm definitely holding on to this one. The one that I am not holding on to though is the Urban Decay Full Spectrum palette. This is a very colourful palette. If I'm totally honest, I really wanted a yellow shadow and in a bit of a sort of collectory mood with Urban Decay palettes. So that was partly why I picked this up. Now, I like this palette. There are a couple of shades that I really like. So a Midnight Blaze, for example, which performs a lot better on the eye than that terrible swatch would make you think. Um, 100 right next to it here. So I really do like those shades. And then you've got obviously Calavera, which is the yellow that I basically bought the whole palette for. But Basically, as I was saying with those MAC individual shades that I bought, I actually bought a yellow MAC shade individually and I feel like as well yellow has become a bit more commonplace since I bought this palette. So I have the likes of the ABH Subculture palette which has a beautiful sort of mustardy yellow in it. So basically, I don't need to hold on to this anymore. So I'm going to declutter this palette. Urban Decay Vice Reloaded. Definitely keeping a hold of this one. As I said with the other Vice palette, I feel like maybe when I spend some more time with the palette as a full, um, there would be shades I would maybe depot and could maybe get rid of the overall palette. This palette, I really can genuinely say that I like almost every shade potentially other than this shade Hot Pants, which is kind of pinky, not very up my street. And then Asphyxia probably wouldn't picked by as an individual shade it's not as offensive as the pink um to me but i really i do actually genuinely like pretty much every other shade in this particularly fond of this shade uvb it's really beautiful it's just absolutely stunning the shade above it misdemeanor which is really nice too but generally i like every sh i could i could kind of go on just watching this whole palette like this is a nice shade and this is a nice shade because genuinely every shade in this palette other than those two is very useful and does get used so i'm definitely definitely holding on to that and that's not even i'm holding on to it now but i feel like with further work i might get rid of it that is very much like this has a place in my collection basically how i feel about this is how i want to end up feeling about everything that is in my makeup collection. On to the remaining things. This is one of the Chanel Illusion d'Ombres. I've talked before about how much I like these shadows in general. This particular shade I think is Rouge Brûlée. Yep, this is absolutely beautiful. It's an absolutely stunning copper shade. Just super, super beautiful. Definitely, definitely keeping a hold of this. No thought whatsoever. I know that I like that. This is by Pat McGrath and is the shade Mercury. Again, definitely holding on to this absolutely beautiful i have to say generally i don't own that much from pat mcgrath but i really like everything i do i resisted buying the guinevere lipstick in both london and florida earlier this year but i'm feeling like my next trip i'm giving in because i just can't stop thinking about it i've really really enjoyed everything i've had from pat mcgrath this is not so much a discovery um because this is a very genuine favourite that I never forgot about and it is the Chanel 
quad in Candour et Experience, forgive my terrible French, and it is this like warm neutral quad, it is absolutely stunning. So that is the four of them, one of my absolute favourite pieces of makeup, definitely, definitely one that I will be keeping a hold of. This is relatively new to me from Diego de la Palma, the Into the Wild. Uh, again, it was limited edition, but if I can find it online, I will link it up below. We'll try and swatch this here. This will be a feat of engineering. This is just such a really beautiful palette. I'm actually quite sad to put this away because I love it. Tiny, tiny little swatches, but this is just such a stunning, stunning palette. There is no way I will be parting with this anytime soon. I really, really like this. And then the last eyeshadow product is this Urban Decay. Um, kind of build your own palette shades that I have in here. This is X or 10, I presume it's X though. This one is Easy Baked and this one is, if it wants to come out, Glitter Rock. We'll swatch, we'll swatch here, we'll go for this space now. So this is Glitter Rock, Easy Baked and X are absolutely lovely. I'm very tempted to keep Easy Baked actually. In fact, I think I will for now. I'm going to keep Easy, easy Baked but I'm going to get rid of the other two. Those two are getting decluttered. This one is getting held on to for now. It makes sense, obviously, to do eyeliners next. Start with this one. I'm definitely going to keep this. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Metallic Luster Liner in the shade Liquid Gold. It's absolutely beautiful and I really, really enjoy it. That's a definite keeper. This one from Stila in the shade Angelfish is another super, super pretty neutral shimmery liner. So again, going to keep hold of that. Really good for in the waterline and things. Next up, I have this one from Urban Decay. This is one of their 24-7 Glide On liners in the shade Heartless. This is another really good waterline colour. Good for opening up the eye. And I'm going to keep that one do. These I really like. These used to get so much hype on YouTube and nobody talks about them anymore but they are the Rimmel Scandalized Eyeliners. This one is the sort of taupey. Oh yeah it's literally called taupe and that is that one there so again really nice for a kind of soft neutral eye that just needs a bit of definition. This is another Steel It Smudge Stick. This one is in the shade Oscar Fish and as you can see this one is completely dried up. So you're ha that I mean that's actually quite painful how much I'm having to press down to get that colour. And it's annoying because it's a beautiful colour but I have literally like taken the top off of this and rewound it up and the whole thing seems to be pretty much dried up the whole way through so I am really sad because as you can see that is a really really pretty colour but this has definitely had its day. Keeping those three that one is going. This is an Essie Lauder eyeshadow in the shade a eyeliner, sorry, in the shade bronze. Again, I will be holding on to. And then this is a Clarins one and this is a beautiful sort of coppery shade. Oh, again, literally called copper. Was a limited edition one. That is what that one looks like, but as I say, it was part of their summer collection, I want to say 2017. I feel like it was the last sort of spring summer before I went in my spending bands. That is that one, but I will be keeping a hold of it. And then another one of the Rimmel Scandalize. Now, I don't know if you can see, but all the writing has rubbed off there. Um, but I can see that whatever this shade name was, it was number 12, but it's the brownie one, basically. So that is that one there, so it's a little bit cooler. Um, than the Estee Lauder ones, so I will be keeping a hold of this. Another Steel It Smudge Stick, this one is in the shade Marie from Mori, and this one is just so, so pretty. This is the exact shades of green that I've been really into recently, those sort of mulchy, deep shades. It's why I've been, <laughs> I'm really sad to put away that Diego de la Palma quad. And then another green, this one is from NYX, and it is the shade Tropical. Very different shade of green. This one's much more quite in line with my nails, actually. You guys can see there, so... As you can see, I'm really feeling green at the moment, so I will be holding on to this one as well. These are some of my favourite liners. Again, I don't, just in general, I think I've said before, I don't feel Marc Jacobs gets enough hype as a brand on YouTube. This is the shade Fine Wine, as the name would suggest, gorgeous claret colour, which I love very very much but this formula is just so good it really sets in place and sticks around and yeah I really really like these liners and don't really hear people talking about them so just in general I, I really like everything I've had from Marc Jacobs and it just doesn't really get spoken about as a brand that often. Uh, last three another Urban Decay 24-7 um, liner in the shade Rockstar this time but as you can see it's a very kind of deep 
purpley sort of bruisey shade almost very attractive sounding but I am keeping a hold of it and then both of my last two liners are from the Ciati Olivia Palermo collaboration this is the purple one which is the shade Fig which I really like so I'm keeping a hold of this as well these are like they are like cool liners in a pencil so they're super soft and smudgy and that is the the black one I don't use a black liner very often but I do if I'm doing it I really like this one for doing it with so keeping a hold of both of them on to blush next this is actually one of the bite beauty multi sticks this is in the shade praline or praline however you want to to pronounce it that is what that looks like obviously you can then blend it out so you can use this as an eyeshadow a lipstick or a blush i used it as a blush and i really do like it it's obviously very pigmented so you do want to go carefully if you're using it as a blush but i will be holding on to that at the moment next up I've got the Tarte blush in the shade Memorable. This is one of the little mini ones, it came in a set. So as you can see, that's quite a metallic pinky blush. And I've also got, kind of similar but not the same, from Dior. This is the shade Rose Sublime, just in terms of it is that kind of shiny metallic way. So it is obviously darker and it's slightly less metallic-y, but I kind of feel like they're they're very similar and I'm going to keep the Dior one so I am going to declutter the Tarte one and then I think I'm actually just going to keep all of the rest of these. I'm a big blush fan to be fair. So this one from Chanel is the shade Rouge Profond. This was actually released as part of the same collection as the Candour It Experience eye quad that I really like so as you can see this is kind of beautiful really rusty red blush which I really enjoy. Definitely keeping a hold of this one. This is MAC Frankly Scarlet, which again, you can kind of see the blushes out. Oh, this doesn't swatch well, but it is very, very pretty on the cheeks. Look at that when it's... You may be able to tell I've been doing a lot of like sort of dolly cheeks through the month of August. Of a similar vein, this is Becca Hyacinth, which is a really beautiful bright pinky colour. That is that one there keeping that nyx bitten which i really like great little drugstore product so that's much more of a neutrally shade and then i've got this elf quad which i've got in the shade dark so it comes in dark and light these are so super pigmented but i really really like all four of these again i'm doing that thing when i'm running out of out of swatch space so that's good pinky one your more neutral one but still as you can see very pigmented i'll do this one next that's one of my favourites, but you definitely need to be careful with it. And then I'll do this one last. So those are the four e.l.f. blushes. I love this, but it is so, so pigmented. You definitely need to be careful with it, but you can see I've been in quite a... I was in a very neutral blush mood at the start of the year, but I've been all about the brights this month. And then the last thing that I've got is my Urban Decay Gwen Stefani blush palette which I definitely will be keeping a hold of. That is the shade Cherry which is kind of frosty pink. Easy. Now that I'm doing this actually let's do easy here. Do we need to? Mm. I feel like the Dior one is just slightly more refined and easy is like a bit more punchy so I'm going to keep both of them but they are super super similar um, but I'm definitely that just makes me even more sure that it's time to get rid of that tart one um because i feel like that one and the tart one are more similar than that one and the dior one so yeah keeping these two and getting rid of this one then you've got the shade angel which is more of a highlight than a blush I suppose it's a cheek palette rather than a blush palette on the bottom you've got lo-fi which i really like hush and OC, which is probably my most used blush within this palette. That is the Gwen Stefani palette. Can't really get it anymore, but if you do ever see it in like TK Maxx or something, I really highly recommend it. I really, really like this palette. So I think what I'm going to do is call an end to this video here and do the lip products as their own video in a separate video because there are quite a lot of lip products. So in total, we've got rid of one eyeliner one eye glitter. I think I might have put that in liner in my um, inventory anyway so it might be two eyeliners, a blush, two eyeshadow palettes and then two of the shadows from this little Urban Decay Build Your Own which I think I've got listed as single shadows on my inventory so two single shadows. What I do if I declutter the likes of this when I'm decluttering a palette that I'm keeping an eyeshadow is I take this out and mark this as decluttered and then I add the single shadow in as a single shadow so it looks like my single eyeshadows go up 
by a quantity of 1 and a value of whatever percentage of the palette that one shadow was worth. So I, I don't know offhand what the value of this palette was, but there were 15 shadows in it. So what I'll do is take whatever the value of this palette is, divide it by 15, and then I'll add amber lights in as being a single shadow in my collection that is worth whatever the value of the palette is by 15. I hope that makes sense in case anyone's like really interested in how I track my inventory kind of side of it when I'm decluttering things. Although it obviously means I might end the year with more single shadows than I started with, the overall value of my collection will be going down and I'll know why that's an increase there, but it'll also be a decrease in palettes. So, you know, it's overall, it's, it's still a good thing. The overall collection's still moving in the right way. So, yeah, I'm pleased with this. I know I'm not the most stringent declutterer, but I definitely feel like this is making a lot of progress for me. Um, and I'm happy to be able to pass these on. Thank you so much for watching this video and as I say, part two of it, which will be all the lip products in their own separate video, will be up as the next video on my channel. So do come back for that and I will see you in that video. Bye!